back, everybody. Josh, your RV nerd here with Bish's RV, or just, hi, if this is your first time joining us. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at some updated 2024 footage of the 28 VBXL, either called Wildwood x Light or Salem Cruise Light. Two names for the exact same RV. The only difference is the decals on the outside. Now, convoluting things a little bit, we're looking at an option package on one today, the Platinum Package. That is the full fiberglass with the tinted windows that you're looking at here. By default, this would be a tin skin camper with no tint on the window. So you kind of have a little bit of a choice between the two. The, the fiberglass skin is going to cost a little more, going to weigh a little more, arguably looks better, and boy does it clean so much easier. Plus the tin on the windows helps keep the sunshine out of there. Uh, this model, the VB stands for VersaBunk, and the XL stands for you're probably going to extra love it. This is quickly becoming uh, a sneaky, ultra popular model within the RV industry, because what it provides is uh, private front sleeping, it provides a, uh, a private rear bunk room, or not. It could be an office, it could be a bunk room, it could be a craft room, it could be a second living room, it could be a mother-in-law suite, it could be an awesome space if you have an adult child with special needs that needs their own private decompression space, but they need more than just a bunk to sleep on. Um, it, it can be a lot of different things because the top bunks move bunk, get out the way. Then you've got the Versa bed on the bottom that opens up into a 60 by 74 thick Camp Queen. Frankly, I think the, the, the fold-out mattress in the bunk room is actually a better, nicer to sleep on mattress than in the, uh, the main bedroom, but they've also enhanced that. They've maintained their um, basically Olympic queen-size mattress, somewhere between a queen and a king, um, and they've gone with what they call their versatile system. Everything seems to be versa with them, including their versa lounge, which can be sofa and dinette. It could be a mega lounge and a little table. This RV I, I could see this working for families, it could work for couples, it could work for so many people in between, but it's not going to work for everybody. It's got a couple things that might be immediate deal breakers. I'm going to show you good with bad. If you like that, hit that subscribe button and I'm going to get inside here before this weather turns because <laughs> um, it feels like we're about to uh, see a house fall on a witch over here at any moment, Annie M. So if you wake up in the morning, like from the bedroom and you start walking out, this is what you're gonna see right here. So the entry door is just to our left, the bedroom door swings over it. Your kind of command centers right here, tankless on demand water heater, dimmer switch touch activated uh, cabin lighting. Like you just roll your thumb over it and the lights go on and off. But if you press and hold, you can actually swell the lights down, which I think is a rather <laughs> swell feature if you will not to mention you got the cool uh accent light going on there above the slide out and they don't use that <coughs> pardon me <coughs> disco inferno blue light that you find in a lot of places some people like the blue lights um i've kind of i've just been around them too long i think i'm i think i'm done with it up top there you see the uh optional charge controller that comes with the solar package uh coming in play there so by default this rv is roof solar prepped and you can option on a 200 watt solar panel with 30 amp controller, which is what we're looking at today. Neat little details here, like the blackout roller shades, really blocking out the sunshine and the nosy neighbors. And the Versa Lounge, uh, about two years ago, the x Light Cruise Light Salem Wildwoods picked that up. Previously, that was only found in the Big Brother Salem Wildwoods. This smaller series, though, um, it is, uh, it's a smaller body, it's a lighter weight, and I'm going to demonstrate and show you why that is the case on the outside of the RV. Um, it is nice that it's carpetless. I like how they trim it all out. It looks very clean, but it does mean that it is a step-up kind of floating slide-out. But that also means that if, uh, you know, the, the G.I. Joe Barbie doll or something like that slides underneath of it, um, it's, you know, it, the slide goes straight in and out. It's not something that's going to get mashed up that way. Now, this is a U-Dinette model, but it's a Versa Lounge. So that, uh, the, the, you know, the seat back that's closest to us can flip-flop on either side of that big cushion. I'll demonstrate that later. So if you want just like a little kitty corner desk over here on a rainy day, they need a coloring book spot. Or if, you know, you are looking for like a little mini desk station, or maybe you just, you know, like my family, we eat on the sofa a lot. Um, we don't, you know, everybody shuts off their things and gather around the table as much as maybe we should, or I would like, but yeah, that's what we do. Just being real about it here. And I know that I'm not alone in that. I'm not the only American family that kind of chills that way. Well, um, you know, keeping the big sofa that we could all kind of sit down on or having the little corner table, I don't know, that sort of works for me. And as soon as they started going Versa Lounge, that was really the generation or I feel like Salem Wildwood turned a corner and they became one of the most innovative dynamic brands out there 
pretty big talk for a conventional stick and tin camper. Like they were the ones that really popularized these big 12 volt compressor fridges. They were the, the first mainstream big volume builder to, to adopt those things. Um, last I knew there was still a six cubic foot gas electric two-way option, but more and more manufacturers are no longer offering gas electric refrigerators because the cost and supply of them is becoming either too high or t uh, too limited to be able to, to handle, you know, a big volume brand. So like, you know, for years you heard how maybe J Flight was the number one RV and then Cherokee now says they're the number one retailing brand. The fact is for years, Salem and Wildwood are the exact same RV. Salem Wildwood is and has been the single most successful, highest volume thing in the RV industry for a long, long while. And that's kind of an unsung little quality that you don't hear on them. Now, I'm kind of clicking batteries on and off as, as I go. I got limited power today. I was actually quite surprised. I don't know if something tweaked. I don't remember it being that good for elbow room. Now, it's if you're bigger than I am, if you're a person of stature, we'll say, it, yeah, it might be a little tight. Um, but, you know, using my dad bod body as reference, that, that's all I can do. Similar here in the shower, where in the shoes, I'm probably about 6'2", floor to peach fuzz on top of my head, which means in a six and a half foot sidewall camper, I do have to have my head up in the bubble, bubble, double toil, trouble thinger. Now, a lot of people ask, why do they always have that stupid step up for the, uh, the the tub and everything right there? Well, people who didn't ask, I'll tell you. Now, the short answer is plumbing code. They have to have room to make certain things move around. But the long answer here is if you, you think about the construction of this RV, like we forget that sometimes the inside, the outside, they have to kind of play ball with one another. Well, if they recess the plumbing down into the floor, then the plumbing is fighting against the, the chassis, the framework. You have to cut a giant hole into the floor, which doesn't sound good when you say it out loud, obviously. Um, and you might have to fight against holding tanks. You may have to shorten down your holding tanks and have less holding capacity that a lot of RVs already feel too limited on. So the plumbing for the shower always ends up above the floor line. Um, also, if we're being real, probably because it's quicker and easier to build them that way. But there are a variety of reasons, people who didn't ask. And people who didn't ask, if you need an emergency doorstop, it turns out um, your owner's manuals folded kind of gently over in half, wedged under that door on an RV that is not flat level, does a great job of holding the door open for video purposes. I'm sure that will be very, very useful to you one of these days. This back here is absolutely the signature calling card of this camper. This is the VB of the VBXL, the Versa Bunk, because it is can only do everything. Now, I want to go ahead and get this band. Let's rip this band-aid off and get it out of the way. The converter fuse box, box, box switch panel, there we go, is back here in the room with potentially kids. Now, this doesn't have to be a bunk room because as you notice, on both sides, you've got the move bunk, get out the way. You have household and USB outlets all over this thing and more of them that you're, you can't see right now, we're going to see in just a second. Um, you can do about anything you want with this. Um, you know, the uh, both upper beds flip out of the way, as we'll get to see in a minute. This can be uh, a sub probably one of the more comfortable sofas and, uh, and again, oddly enough, one of the more comfortable beds in the RV. But if we do flick the switch and say move bunk, get out the way, you see that that thing folds up. It's on a gas strut. The bottom uh, cushions come off. The thing folds open. It becomes a, uh, a handy little uh, sleeping space there. Uh, the, the thing is, though, you can flip both bunks up. You can totally get that bed out of the way. Nothing is screwed down in terms of, like, uh, that, that cushion bed on the floor. If you want to totally get this out of the way, you want to bring some kind of desk in here. There's power outlets all over the place. You want to turn the stand next to the sofa into a printer shelf. You know, this could be a solo or couples camping rolling mobile office. Or it could be something where maybe that's how you use it, but maybe sometimes a grandkid visit and you have to kind of dual purpose it. This could be a private rear den. This could be a sewing craft room. It could be just about anything you want. You may have noticed down inside the cabinet over here, there were some uh, TV hookups. I will tell you the storage in this bunk room is limited. That is something that you're going to have to consider and contend with. And that's one of those things that if you're a first time RVer, you, you don't think about that stuff. You take for granted that like in your house, there's room to put all your kids' stuff. In a lot of campers, you don't have that. So that is definitely something that you're going to want to consider. 
Up front below the electric Tootsie Toast and Fireplace, you have a little flip-flop shop shoe garage kind of jobber. And uh, that sucker down there, um, it activates, the, the light under it activates with the same light as the uh, accent light above the slide. So indirect lighting basically all off one switch just to make life a little simple and easy. The air ducting in here, obviously centralized because otherwise it would be very uncomfortable in the front and rear rooms in the bathroom. Um, although, when you first get to your campsite on a screaming hot day, you might see these fins are open. That means like 70% of the air conditioning is going to drop down here. On a hot day to get the living room cooled off, that's great. Then you can close those off uh, a couple hours before evening to get your, uh, you know, your, your private rear bedroom and front bedroom uh, to get those kind of cooled off and a little more uh, acclimatized. Now, one of the things that's uh, a little bit of an unsung quality on this due to the Versa Lounge, if you're sitting over here at the rear Versa table, desk, whatever you want to call it thing, you're staring straight at the entertainment. If you shove yourself over there on the bottom left into the, uh, the corner of the Versa Lounge, you're staring straight at the entertainment. By default, it doesn't have a TV. And if you're sitting all the way against that window down there, well, yeah, it's going to be a wicked neck wrecker. So you're probably going to want to get some kind of swing arm TV. This is something that could have some entertainment value on a rainy day. Like, here it comes. I'm going to get drenched heading inside. This is going to suck, but whatever. That's, that's the life, ladies and gentlemen. That's the work. That's what it comes with. Maybe I'll get lucky and cash in some karma points and it'll quit raining as soon as I step outside. It's not going to happen, but, you know, a girl can dream. <laughs> anyway, cracking everything open up here, looking at the storage. Because this does have uh, a mini outside camp kitchen, that means it only has room for one drawer in the kitchen. That is where, like, this is a very similar floor plan to the 273 QB XL. The living room, the bedroom are the same, but the kitchen has three drawers instead of one. That's because in the 273, you have fixed L bunks in the back room instead of the wide open Versa bunk, and the camp kitchen is buried under those, uh, it, but it is optional. So uh, last I knew, unless they standardized it. Again, this is the time of year where those options change, and it takes me a little bit to get those updates. Ironically, updated RVs tend to get shipped out to dealerships like ours before the product updates are made available to us in any sort of like PDF format. Stupid, but that's the way it works. Uh, moving our way up front, I like the little radius edge on that, you know, just nice little detail touch there. Um, also, even though it's not an extra tall RV, it's only six and a half foot on the sidewall, I like that they still include a, uh, a light switch for us right there. Ooh, the rain just quit. I better wrap this up so I can sneak inside and dodge some raindrops. Gigantic windows overlooking both sides of the bed now, like more than double. I think these are like triple or quadruple the total square footage of windows that you used to have in these bedrooms, and they call it their camping experience package. You find that through all of the Tandem Axle, Salem, and Wildwood uh, stick and tin travel trailers, and I think the laminated Heritage Glens and, and uh, Hemispheres have also kind of followed suit where they could. The new Versa Tilt Bed, what that does is the, uh, the longer bed that they adopted last year, it pulls it up out of the way during the day, and uh, it actually gives you room to kind of get dressed in here. And if you decide you want to mount a TV on the uh, the opposing wall, you want to kind of sit up in bed at night, watch watch something, you know, do a little Netflix and chill, or perhaps some Amazon Prime and commitment. I don't know where you're at in your, your uh, relationship cycle. That would be the place that you put it. But uh, it's kind of interesting. Down here, you've got these uh, storage totes, but you've also got a little um, kind of flip-flop slot down there. But sliding those out, just to kind of give you an idea of how much, that's kind of acting like your dresser storage, effectively. When the bed is down, that is when you can lift it. When the when it's in the up versa mode, it doesn't really, you know, gas strut easy lift. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. But it is on a 12-volt power actuator. So it's just push button easy. And I'm on, I'm on a, like, a, a car jump box. I'm not even on a full battery and I can run that thing. I can run the slides, the lights, I can do all that stuff in this camper. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Or let's just say for whatever reason, like I don't I don't know what's going on, but like your battery flat dies or something like that. If you absolutely had to, you could plug this camper's um, trailer plug into your vehicle, assuming your vehicle has a hotline for charging run, which most with tow packages will, but not all, so keep in mind. Um, you could uh, actually run the bed to slide the lights and stuff just off that so if you just need to get the camper you know uh ready or something like that you know you don't necessarily need to go lugging around a battery if it's spring or fall or whatever the case may be like you forgot your favorite glasses or something in it you don't got to do that where this one does have an achilles heel though 
is road mode. Because it gets pinch-tacular in here awful quickly. What I mean is everything gets pinched off real, real fast. Now, um, you can see how the, the slide floor basically comes right up to the, the, uh, the kitchen counter. I've been far more, uh, well, I've learned more about this, really, only in the past year, but I've been talking about it a lot more. It's, the manufacturer doesn't test to see if the slide is load-bearing when it's retracted like this. Now, storage in the, uh, the, the lounge, yes, they've accounted for that. But having, you know, a family of four sitting on the inside edge of an unsupported edge of a slide-out, they haven't tested that. They expect the exterior sidewall to be the support under the floor over here. So what that means is if you feel like gingerly tiptoeing around here to maybe get to the fridge... What I can tell, I can't promise you anything. I can tell you probably going to be okay. I've never had an issue with it in all the years that uh, I've been in campers and didn't know what I know. Or if you do a butt scoot boogie and rotate and twist over the countertop to get back there, um, you know, you, you could uh, maybe get to the fridge. Now, if you leave the bathroom door open and you somehow manage to secure it and you keep the table folded down out of the way somehow, you might be able to twist and shout Fantastic Four your way into that bathroom. Uh, but really... By default, this RV lets you walk in the door, look to the left, and open the slide. And that is really what this one's intended for. And I tell you what, you sit in one of these things alone, with the slide closed, with the lights off, it gets rather uh, spooktacular in here. This is one of those that is or is not half-ton towable, depending on the specific capacities of your specific half-ton and exactly where you're going to take it. So half to three-quarter is what you're going to be looking at here. This is prob this is going to be more in the half size for a lot of people. Um, that's one of the things about the x Light and Cruise Light Series Wildwoods. You might notice how the slide-out actually uh, you know, is above the floor. This is why there's that little step-up into the slide, but that system also means they don't need a ram bar punching a hole through the side of an I-beam, which means you now need a larger I-beam to, to compensate. And that is why the x Light Cruise Light series of Salem Wildwoods is um, shorter exterior height, uh, lower to the ground, lighter weight, less cost. Uh, they used to not have a heated belly. Uh, I think it was last year they finally said, you know what, let's just do that. So in terms of um, equipment and whatnot, the x Light Wildwood that we're looking at here and the full wildwood that peeked into frame over here, they're, they're almost a part for part match. It's just that they have a different body size and you can kind of see that. Like these are six and a half foot tall, not six, nine tall. That's kind of what helps define them. Uh, again though, on both sides of the bedroom, they went those massive camping experience windows. Not a whole lot of windows on the campsite of this one, obviously. We are traditional eight foot wide right here. And um, whether you get the fiberglass exterior or not, you're going to get a, uh, a 0.4, or no, 0 0.040, pardon me, 0 0.040 uh, thickness aluminum nose sweep. That basically the whole nose is a diamond stone guard at this point. It's just not in that diamond quilted northern kind of shape. Magnet hold back, dry erase board, getting you down here into the pass-through compartment. And it is a full pass-through. They don't use the exact same baggage door on both sides, which I kind of think would be nice. And you can see a little bit of that VersaTilt hardware up there. That's the actual motor and lift arm and everything. And there was a part of me that said, hmm, I wonder if shifting cargo could smash that. But it's all the way up at the ceiling of the pass-through. I, I, I feel like maybe not necessarily theoretically impossible. Also very improbable is kind of how I'm going to look at that. That's a high pressure but cold water only sprayer port and they have tweaked this little arrangement around right now. It is now not just a griddle, it could be a grill as well if that is your preference there. Although I will say on a windy day like today, it will probably struggle in terms of heat and um, flickering flame. And the reason for that is RVs like this use a low pressure kind of passive propane system. It's not a really high pressure active thing like you might find um, like on, on a lot of grills or home solutions or something like that. So if it is windy outside, you're probably gonna cook inside or you're gonna be calling DoorDash to bring you some food at the campground. Prepped and ready for a uh, telescopic ladder and backup camera and slide awnings. Um, the uh, roof of this is fully walkable, and it's nice that they at least give us the prep for that ladder to get up there. Even though the ladder's not included, they at least kind of give you the idea that you can do it, which is especially convenient considering if you read the letter of the law, on their warranty, it says you have to like inspect and maintain your roof like every three months. I always thought it was funny. They tell you that you have to do it, but they don't really help you do that at all, but neither here nor there. 
these um, quick drop stabilizers over there have an additional stabilizer bar on them that along with the stable steps takes so much of the jerkiness out of the RV as people move around and come and go from the trailer. Um, hot cold, uh, what am I saying? Sorry. I, I almost, I was going to say outside utility shower, I think, but that is a water heater that we're looking at. Tankless on demand water heater on the left. In the middle, we have our black tank flush down below our sewer hookups. And it is obvious this is not made to be any sort of like off-road RV. Now the camper's not level currently. The nose is higher than the tail, which is making this look lower than it actually is. But the fact is, this is made for conventional roads. This is not made for doing some kind of Baja off-road action, brother. Now you've probably seen this sign sitting over here a couple times as I've done this video wondered about that one of the things that I really like about uh, working at Bish's RV we have a 72 hour basically no questions asked return policy after you've signed the dotted line even after you've drugged the RV home and taken it off our curb that's the point where a lot of dealerships wash their hands of it say mm, not my problem anymore if for basically any reason you don't like maybe you're terrified of how it towed the the, there was an unnoticed defect after you took it home or just, I don't know, like you lost your job, something terrible like that. Within 72 hours, bring it back, we'll give your money back. You know, we'll just cancel everything out. And that means that we then have a used RV in our lineup that we sell as used, not new, but that is something that we will do for you. Or we can swap you into something else, uh, even if it's different dollars and cents. We can figure all that out. And that's, it's just a, a nice peace of mind so that you can make sure you are for sure getting your second camper the first time around. So when you're ready, we're ready. I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Whether it's a Salem or Wildwood, whether it's Standom or Platinum Series, that one link will take care of you. And until next time, that wind's picking back up. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.